What is going on, Trash Talkers? We're back with another episode for you. Today, we continue our series and the final installment of ranking NFL teams, this time with the secondaries. We're going to take all 32 teams, rank them A through F. All that and much more coming your way right now. All right, Nick. Well, we are in the final stage of ranking NFL teams. We have gone position group by position group, and now we have reached the secondary for every NFL team. And I I think this is one of the positions that we take a look at and say, you can't really get by with just average players. No, you really can't. This is the last line of defense for every defense, and you have to make sure that you have some guys back here. doesn't need to be complete, but you need to make sure you have some guys you can rely upon that are going to get the job done. And when you're talking about safeties, they need to be able to be, play in the box, play against tight ends, keep up with wide receivers. They have to be very versatile. With cornerbacks, you need to be able to play in zone, play in man, stay on the receiver's hip, jam them at the line. There's a lot that goes into these guys, and that's why they get paid the big bucks. But without a good one, you're not going very far. All right, starting it off with the F tier, the worst of the worst, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Tennessee Titans, the Detroit Lions, the Atlanta Falcons, the Carolina Panthers, and the New York Jets. Starting off with the Jacksonville Jaguars, they've made some moves in free agency, and they're looking to make some more primed in really good positions with the NFL draft. But it just isn't enough. They've made some really good acquisitions at the cornerback position. Let's see how all of these guys can gel together now that they're under a new regime, under a new uh, defensive scheme. We, we don't know much. And if we're going by what they had last year, it was not anything to write home about. I like the addition of Shaq Griffin from the Seattle Seahawks, but let's see what he can do with this team. The Tennessee Titans, they lost and lost and lost. They keep losing pieces, especially on the defensive side of the ball, and it is not a good look for them. They replaced the equivalent of Logan Ryan, Adoree Jackson, and Malcolm Butler with Janoris Jenkins, and that is just not going to cut it in today's day and age. And Janoris Jenkins, as good as he was in New Orleans as a number two, cannot be relied upon to be a number one corner in this NFL, and I just don't like where the Tennessee Titans are headed with this secondary. Then you take a look at the D- the Detroit Lions. Jeff Okuda is great, and he's a you know he he has shining moments, but he's not consistent. And then you take a look at their safeties, Deron Harmon, who they got from the New England Patriots. He's done a really solid job as their strong safety, but he he needs to do a lot more. And they they need more depth. They need pieces around these guys because they can't just do it themselves. The Atlanta Falcons, they had A.J. Terrell, who was a nice, bright, and shining spot for them last year through the draft. I look for them to go the same way this this draft as well, try to get somebody that they can add next to A.J. Terrell, maybe lock down the second side of the field, and then uh, let's see what they can do with those safeties. They lost uh, both DeMonte Casey and Keanu Neal, both going to the Dallas Cowboys, so let's see what that safety room looks like by the time the, the NFL draft is over. The Carolina Panthers, Jeremy Chin is the only bright and bright spot for this the secondary. The cornerbacks really can't cover anyone. They they struggle pressing at the line of scrimmage. They struggle in all sorts of coverage. It's not a good look. Matt Rule needs to get these cornerbacks up and ready to go because they're, they're not going to be able to cover anyone. And looking at their division, they have a lot of t- talented receivers that they're going to have to cover. And then the New York Jets, if I pointed at one position that the New York Jets needed to focus on in free agency. It was the defensive backfield and the offensive line. The defensive backfield got nobody added to it. In fact, all he did was retain Marcus May. They have made zero moves at the cornerback position, and I think it is a big fault of Joe Douglas's to not spend some money and get some of the top-tier free agents that were available through free agency. Now he has to look at the draft to try to fill some of these holes. He's not going to hit on every single pick, so let's see what where this – secondary ends up 
I think the running theme for the F tier is each team has one player, but one player only. And when you're talking about a secondary, you're looking at a minimum of four players on the field at all times. So you're going to need to fill a lot more holes if you're going to be a winning culture, a winning team in the NFL. So all these teams have their work cut out for them. Seems like they may have a foundation with that one player, but it's time to build upon that. In the D tier, we have the Minnesota Vikings, the Houston Texans, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Dallas Cowboys, the Las Vegas Raiders, the Philadelphia Eagles, and the Seattle Seahawks. With the Minnesota Vikings, they were great a couple of years ago, but the loss of Xavier Rhodes and the loss of Anthony Harris this past season really leaves them dry. They have some young, young corners that they're working with, which is great. And then they have Harrison Smith, who's still doing well, even into his later years of his uh, career. But this team is still going to have to work around their, their growing pains. They're going to have to figure out how they can improve upon it. And I expect a guy like Mike Zimmer, who is known for his defensive schemes, to really work with this, this group and figure out how they can improve. With the Houston Texans, they acquired so much talent this offseason that they're all, the whole secondary is pretty new and they're all going to have to learn to work together the only consistency is Justin Reed who is a, a Pro Bowl caliber safety and that's a great starting block but it's time to see whether the new acquisitions are going to pay off for the Pittsburgh Steelers they lost a ton of talent the only solid pieces they have are Minka Fitzpatrick who's arguably the best free safety in the league and then Terrell Edmonds who's a great strong safety they just need to work on these corners. They, they lost a, a couple this offseason that could hurt them for next season. For the Dallas Cowboys, like you mentioned earlier, the acquisitions of DeMonte Kazee and Keanu O'Neill are great. But you need to replace Chidobi Awuzie. You need to add upon Trayvon Diggs. Hopefully they'll do that in the draft. Otherwise, they're going to be in some deep water like they were last season. For the Las Vegas Raiders, they lost a couple big pieces, mostly LaMarcus Joyner at free safety. Now you have to rely on Jonathan Abram to actually stay healthy for once in his career. And you need guys like Damon Arnett to actually step up and prove that he was worth being a first round pick. So it's up to these guys to see whether they're actually worth the price that was paid for them or whether they're just average players at best. For the Philadelphia Eagles, they they struck golds when they traded for Darius Slay and got him for a steal. But now they need to really uh, fix it up. And they started to improve upon this secondary, adding Anthony Harris, which was a huge signing for them. These two together should be really good, but they still need to add a couple more pieces for the secondary to be where it once was. And for the Seattle Seahawks, they're really holding on to a string right now. It's Jamal Adams holding this group up right eh, as it is. And he He's arguably the best strong safety in the league. He just set the record for most sacks by a safety in the league. And without him, they are truly nothing. He is the one holding this group upright. And he has his injury history as well. So if he can't stay healthy, this, this group really is struggling. Yeah, I mean, just taking a look, you know, what the common theme that we have here is that people can't stay healthy. There's not a lot of depth. I mean... Just even talking about the Dallas Cowboys, we talked about Keanu Neal. Well, they're utilizing him as the weak side linebacker for this defense. He's not even being utilized as a strong safety. So, I mean, a lot of these guys, a lot of these teams have guys that aren't in the right position or aren't in positions where they can succeed. You know, I take a look at some of these teams and say they need to bolster their depth, and there's just not enough free agents out there to get them to where they want to go. They're going to have to all fight for some of the same talent in the NFL draft this year. It's not going to be pretty. It's not going to work out well for most of these teams. Look for some of these teams to really get screwed out of having some of the top tier guys available on their team. Next up, we have the C tier teams led off by the San Francisco 49ers, the Cincinnati Bengals, the Los Angeles Chargers, the Kansas City Chiefs, the New York Giants, the Green Bay Packers, and the Washington football team. Starting off with the San Francisco 49ers, they have some pretty decent players. And, you know, Jason Verrett was finally able to stay healthy for once in his career. And he showed what he can do. He was a top pick for the Los Angeles Chargers a couple of years ago. And now that he stayed healthy, he showed that he's a pretty decent corner. He can lock down coverage. He, he can play zone schemes. He can do a lot of different things. I like what they have in San Francisco. Can they stay healthy? Can they build this team up? What happens with Richard Sherman? There's a ton of things that this team needs to go through. And I, I just don't know if they have the answers quite yet. The Cincinnati Bengals have made a ton of moves, specifically in the secondary, to bolster up what was a pretty weak group last year. 
And now we ha- we get to see how it's all going to work out. We don't know exactly how they're all going to mesh together, how they're going to take to a new culture, a new system, everything like that. So we have to see what happens with them. The the Los Angeles Chargers, you know, they lost Casey Hayward th- uh, by cutting him. And then Chris Harris Jr. was left as your number one corner, which is a pretty tough look because as a number one corner in Denver, he didn't really look all that great. Now they have some pieces around him. Let's see how they work out as well. Uh, Derwin James is coming back healthy. I like what he has been able to show since he entered the NFL. I like what he can bring to this defense, a, a, a big booming presence. And uh, we'll, we'll see where the Chargers are at, but I think that they're significantly average right about now. The Kansas City Chiefs, this secondary got torched last year. And the only bright spot, if you will, for this team, besides uh, Tyron Matthew, might have been Legereus Sneed. He started to step up a little bit toward the end of the season. Let's see if they can continue on that path. But outside of that, Kansas City Chiefs are not all that intimidating in the defensive secondary. The New York Giants, they have made a couple of moves. They they were really pushing hard to sign Malcolm Butler from the Tennessee Titans. They brought in a Dory Jackson. They had Logan Ryan from last year. They, they had some other players as well. Uh, if they had kept DeAndre Baker and he was able to play for them, this team would probably be a high t- B-tier team, but they still need to figure out who's going to play that second corner position on the outside. And Dory Jackson's going to be more in the slot than anything else. So let's figure out who's going to be playing cornerback for this team and uh, really figure this out. Joe Judge is still in the middle of this rebuild. So let's give them some time. If they're at a C tier right now, I expect them to be a high B moving forward. The Green Bay Packers, uh, Jair Alexander is an incredible talent at, at the cornerback position, but opposite him, I mean, Who do you got? Kevin King? Kevin King got torched left and right. I mean, there were NFL quarterbacks who were saying, I want to face Kevin King. That's never good if you're an NFL cornerback, right? You don't want quarterbacks licking their chops to try to get a piece of you. And that's exactly what was happening. They were picking him apart left and right. He couldn't really cover anything. And the Packers had no choice but to bring him back because they don't have any depth. Then you le- you're left with the Washington football team, and this is the weakest part of their defense. A strong defensive front seven, but the back end has gotten decimated with players leaving, players not being available. Ronald Darby leaves. Let- let's see what they can do with some of the pieces they added in free agency, but overall, Washington is a pretty average secondary to go along with their elite front seven. There are a few teams in this group, the the Cincinnati Bengals, the Kansas City Chiefs, the New York Giants, and the Washington football team. All these teams have young secondaries, secondaries that are going to improve over time if they are coached up right. They need to have the proper coaching to reach their full potential, and I think some of them will. We'll see how it all plays out this next season. Moving on to the B tier, we have the Cleveland Browns, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Chicago Bears, the Indianapolis Colts, the Los Angeles Rams, the New Orleans Saints, the Arizona Cardinals, the Buffalo Bills, and the Denver Broncos. A lot of teams here. Starting with the Cleveland Browns, I mean, when you look at this team on paper, they're A tier all the way. But as the as we've said before, they need to prove it. John Johnson, Troy Hill, they may have chemistry with one another, but they need to have cohesion with the rest of their their teammates. Grant Delpit, he hasn't even seen his first NFL game yet. We need to see how he's going to do with this team as well. So they've got some questions to be answered. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they're great in Todd Bowles' system. From time to time, they have their inconsistencies. You look at the Kansas City Chiefs game during the season, they were horrible. But come Super Bowl, they're great. So they've got to work on those kinks, figure out how they can be more consistent, and they'll be an A-tier secondary. For the Chicago Bears, the loss of Kyle Fuller was absolutely massive. Now you got to figure out who your CB1 is moving forward. You've got your safety set, but you got to figure out this cornerback situation, how you're going to be rock solid moving forward. For the Indianapolis Colts, they retained their big piece in Xavier Rhodes last season, but they've got some questions to answer for their second for their safeties. Their safeties uh, are now a little bit weaker without Malik Hooker. Yes, he was out last season, but they still need to get a guy they can rely upon in the safety core that's going to help them out. 
for the Los Angeles Rams. As I mentioned, the, the Browns got John Johnson and Troy Hill. Well, the Rams lost John Johnson and Troy Hill, and now they're going to have to replace them in the draft or some other way. But that's, those are massive losses for them, and I don't know how they're going to recover this season. For the New Orleans Saints, they lost Janoris Jenkins, and but they still have Marshawn Lattimore and M Marcus Williams, who are big pillars for that secondary. They're going to have to be the ones that hold strong through this quarterback change. For the Arizona Cardinals, they're a secondary that's getting better by the day, it seems. They had Byron Murphy and Malcolm Butler this offseason, which are huge in the wake of the release of Patrick Peterson. But I think those are big upgrades over what Patrick Peterson was bringing over the last couple of years. Plus, they, they on top of that, they have Buda Baker and Isaiah Simmons in their safety group. So these four are really going to anchor this team down during their potential Super Bowl run. For the Buffalo Bills, the secondary is one of the best in the NFL. When you have Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer, two elite top-tier safeties on your team with Tredavious White, one of the best lockdown corners in the NFL, this is obviously one of the best secondaries. But they, ha they had their ups and downs last season. They weren't consistent, and they need to show why they are, why they are so great. So this should be a rebound year for the Buffalo Bills. And for the Denver Broncos... They got so much better this offseason with the acquisitions of Ronald Darby and Kyle Fuller. Absolutely massive. Now that Kyle Fuller's back in Vic Fangio's system, we should see him really shine and be back to what he used to be. And they have Justin Simmons, who they franchise tagged, just actually signed him to a long-term deal. That's a massive piece. He's a Pro Bowl safety, and he's really going to contribute to this team as well. They have one of the strongest up-and-coming secondaries in the NFL. Yeah, I mean... It seems like this is this list is very top heavy. Taking a look at the B tier teams, and you take a look, and all of these teams have two solid corners, two solid safeties, and it seems like all of the talent is not is is spread amongst these teams, and everybody else C D and F is like, what about me? Where where can I get some of this talent? Uh, I take a look at some of these teams, and you're right, some of them have to prove it, but. If there's one team I don't expect to be in on this uh, in this tier at the end of this season, it's the Cleveland Browns, and it's because I expect them to be in the A tier. What they have been able to bring in through free agency is just an absolute joke, honestly. I mean, these guys are basically the rich getting richer. You you already had Denzel Ward, you had Greedy Williams, and then you added Troy Hill. But then you bring in John Johnson to line up next to Grant Delpit, who didn't get to start or even play a single snap last year. You're basically adding three premier talented players to this defensive secondary with an elite front seven. These guys are no joke. The def the Cleveland Browns have made it a point to make to solidify their defense, specifically their secondary, and they have done just that. The Denver Broncos are an incredible team. I like what they've been able to do. Let's see if they can get back to doing things the way Vic Fangio likes to do them on defense. And then it, when you take a look at some of these other teams, you know exactly what they're built on. They're built on heavy defense. The only team I don't like here is the New Orleans Saints. And Nick, you and I had a back and forth about it prior to the show, but I, I just don't believe that the New Orleans Saints will be in the B tier. I think they're going to end up, you know, really struggling, especially when you have teams like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, like the Carolina Panthers, and like the Atlanta Falcons in your division. You have to face them twice a year. Marshawn Lattimore, Marcus Williams, and Malcolm Jenkins, those guys are just not going to get it done for you guys. I, I think they're going to falter a lot in losing Janoris Jenkins. He might not be the the biggest piece that they could have lost, but he is the linchpin that is, was holding this thing together. Now I think the whole thing's going to start to fall apart and you're going to see it with the new Orleans saints. I mean, I don't know They're They now get to face the quarterback that sees ghosts. So we'll see how that works out. Finally, we end with the A tier, the best of the best. And there's only three teams that we thought were fitting of the absolute best of the best crowning the Miami Dolphins, the Baltimore Ravens, and the New England Patriots, starting off with the Miami Dolphins. These guys, they made it their mission to fix up this defensive secondary last year, and they did just that. They locked up Byron Jones coming over from the Dallas Cowboys to play opposite Xavier Howard. They locked up some really great safeties. There's no question the Miami Dolphins have arguably one of the best secondaries in the NFL 
they they showed it last year on the field. I expect nothing different from them this year on the field. The Baltimore Ravens, they have three cornerbacks that could arguably be CB1s on any other NFL franchise. They are that stacked at the cornerback position. My biggest concern for them is the safety position, but I do like Chuck Clark. He has a lot to give to this team. If they're one safety away, but three CB ones away, I'm giving them the A nod. They deserve it, and they can lock down any team that they want to. And the New England Patriots, when you have Stephon Gilmore, J.C. Jackson, Jason McCourty, and Jonathan Jones as your four cornerbacks, good luck getting anything done on these guys. You, I didn't even talk about the safeties where you know they drafted Kyle Duggar early in the second round last year. Devin McCourty's still there and and doing his thing. They were able to bring in some really top-tier talent. Jalen Mills coming over from Philadelphia. New England has built this secondary to to be kind of reminiscent of what I remember their secondary to be back in 2004. I look for them to be very versatile and extremely coverage-happy. I I, I like what New England has done. Bill Belichick has to be pretty thrilled with what he's built in that secondary. Yeah, it's hard to leave any of these teams out of the A tier when each of them has... Uh, at least two top tier cornerbacks on each Byron Jones and Xavier Howard for the Dolphins Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters for the Ravens and JC Jackson and Stefan Gilmore for the Patriots these guys are arguably all top 10 cornerbacks in the NFL and they are going to lock down just about every wide receiver that they come in contact with they are by far and away a tier teams all right, well, that's going to do it for now. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell. We go live every single day. That'll be all. Peace and love.